Yo, what's up YouTube? Check this out. Leg workout time. Just me. Solo leg workout. Type that into X and XX. Anyway, why do I always do this? In the intro, it always goes downhill. Here's the thing. I'll be training legs, but a bit different than normal. Less uh, video production. Scott the videographer is a lazy piece of shit. So mostly just training vlog style and it's a leg workout. We'll have other workouts as well coming up. However, we are going to be doing the whole YouTube paid subscription shit. Don't worry, we'll still have all our normal awesome videos four or five times a week on the channel. But these kinds of videos, long form, where I do the whole workout, we basically show like damn near all the sets and reps. You get to hear me gagging and breathing and I'll talk about a bunch of wisdom shit and about the rationalization for why I put my feet where I put my feet and why arch like I arch, blah, blah, all that stuff, all the in-depth stuff. We're gonna be doing that on the paid channel, so if you're interested in this kind of video, you really love it, go upstairs, ask your mom to buy you a subscription to the RP YouTube. If she says no, remember you can always do the following. But mom, if you do that enough times, mom will buy it. And then we'll be friends for money. So anyway, give that some thought. What am I thinking about right now? The workout, lying leg curls, middle finger backwards, leg press, and then camber bar squats, the love of my life. I would kiss the bar, but bacterially, that's probably not a good idea. Anyway, let's get to it. What is the most important exercise for the human body that you could do, not just for physical development, but for emotional development? You know, like that like Greek, like respect of the body plus mind type shit and like the Japanese shit, like, uh, what is that shit? Like, stone and steel or whatever. Anyway, uh, leg curls is the answer. Leg curls are an exercise that, it doesn't just strengthen your body, well, a specific small part of your body, it strengthens your soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any case, that's what I try to tell myself because I have like four sets of these fucking shits. Starting with leg curls, Dr. Mike, why are you starting with leg curls? Why is it an isolation movement? The real reason is if I do leg curls and I take like a five minute break after, when I do leg presses and squats later, my hamstrings really don't get involved much. And leg curls are just not very systemically fatiguing. Like the hamstrings are a large muscle, but not like large like the quads. Leg curls do not require, um, uh, what's that called? Axial loading at all, right? They actually stretch your spine, which is cool. So you can get them out of the way, get a really great stimulus, and then move on to the next. Previously, I had been really, really prioritizing quads and I was getting really good legs to hamstring stimulation for my other day, which was good mornings in the mesocycle before this. And so I did leg curls last. And I gotta say, I did like five sets of them towards the end and didn't get super sore because I was so tired from doing a crap load of hack squats and a crap load of lunges and all that other stuff. But today we start with leg curls. So feel free to do that in your own programming. And uh, yeah, warming up. I generally, my warmups for most of my lifts are a set of 12, very light, a set of eight, pretty light, a set of four at just below at or just above the actual weight I'll be using that day. And then I go into working sets. So I already did one set of 12 uh, at I think 80 pounds. And now at like 130, I'll do a set of eight. And just to put that in perspective, 130 fresh warmed up on this machine, I could do for probably 25 reps to failure. So uh, eight is still very, very easy, but like it's like a meaningful weight that gets shit going. Um, if you have to ask, warming up slower is better than warming up faster. Because warming up slower might take five more minutes for your whole workout, but it can reduce the chance of injury significantly and it can potentiate your performance significantly. And for bodybuilding, warming up really well tends to increase your mind-muscle connection substantially. So that's a huge thing. The last thing you wanna do is not warm up, do a whole set of hamstring curls, and someone's like, hey, how'd your hams feel? And you're like, I don't, I don't really know what I felt. And then the second set, you're like, ah, now I feel something. Well, if you warm up well, your first set is high quality, just like your second. That was fucking light. Holy balls. Next warm up, try 180. 
Most I've ever done on this machine was 150. However, that was after a whole workout of quads. So we'll see. We'll warm up with 180. If it feels good, I'll do it. The goal here will be like about 15 reps on the first set, and then second, third, et cetera, sets will be my reps, which means I do as many as I can. A few reps shy of failure. And then let's say I get to 13, I rest for a bit, do two more, and then get off 15 total for all the sets after. That was easy. Easy four. That'll be more except. so hard. Those are my reps. I got 15 straight on the first set, and then I now, second set was 10, three, and two. 15 total, <sighs> two my rep rest breaks for three mini my rep sets total. Um, some people have been asking and saying like, hey, hey, Dr. Mike, you do my reps a little bit better, better, Jesus, that was Freudian slip. You do my reps a little differently than Berge, Fagrelli, who invented them and coined the term. Yeah, I do them differently. But, uh, so if you think about it sort of intellectually, the big category is rest pause. And a fraction of that is my reps. And another fraction is other ways of doing rest pause. The thing is, the way we use them most of the time at RP, is a high rep, higher rep set with several seconds break followed by mini sets. There are different ways to do rest pause. Like some people do rest pause where they do a set of three, rest, 10 seconds, a set of three, rest, a set of three, and then they're done. So ours is much more like Berge's Maya rep concept. And because I learned the concept from him and because he's a great guy, um, I feel like I'm probably gonna continue to call it my reps so that he gets the proper recognition and honor that he deserves. And because if you read about my reps from him and you look at how we do them, it doesn't take a whole lot of inventiveness to be like, oh, okay, it's very, very similar. It's just variation on a theme. I feel like calling what we do my reps is much more accurate than calling them uh, rest pause sets. Or rather the accuracy is the same, the specificity is closer if we call them Maya reps, even though it's not perfect. And then another question I get really commonly is that this whole thing where you do one straight set, rest normal time, and then you do Maya rep sets to match the total reps that straight set. No, that's not how Berge does it. Berge usually picks an exercise, I think, and just does one Maya rep set or like three to five pauses. And that's it, calls that exercise. We do multiple approaches. Why? Uh, it's just an effective tool which gives you objective numbers to hit and know that you're scaling volume in a rational, progressive manner. And if you need another set, 
you can add it. And if you don't, you don't, because there's no guarantee that one myo rep set, like, you know, set of 20, five, three, four, and then you're, you're done or whatever, five, four, three, there's no guarantee that it provides adequate stimulus. So the next question is, okay, if you're still doing my reps, but you're not sufficiently stimulated, what do you do next? Uh, well, you know, straight set starts, gives you a really good basis to figure out, okay, this is a good weight for me. And then you do my rep sets, as many of them as you need, with normal rest breaks in between in order to fill in the volume that you need. Because a lot of training comes down to this. You pick an effective modality, straight sets, my reps, drop sets, down sets, et cetera, and you do as much of it as it takes to fill in the requisite volume that your muscle group has to have. There's no guarantee that one approach at it does enough. So sometimes you have to do multiple, that's it. That's it. Three sets of leg curls. Now it's leg press time. Why three sets? It's my best estimate. That's what, what's close to my minimum effective volume. I sure, sure hope this doesn't break. Um, ugh. All right, won't lean on that. Uh, could it be too low? Maybe. What's the problem of it being too low? Not a huge problem, just a little less stimulus than I wanted. If it's too high a volume, what ends up happening is I get overlapping soreness into my next session, which I definitely don't want from a stimulus for that session perspective, excessive damage causing growth problems, and also an injury risk increase training sore. So if it's your first week of a mezzo, which this is for me, forgot to say that, um, err on the side of, a, your best estimate, but if you're not sure, err on the side of a little bit less volume. You could always do more next week. If you err on the side of too much volume, you have to make adjustments to the thing you fucked up later on. Like press time. But Dr. Mike, you're doing leg press. Yeah. A lot of times on machines, quad machines, hacks, wet leg press, I like to do bodyweight squats first and warm up because they're easy. I do like 15 reps, slow with a pause. And then I go to like a decent weight right away on leg presser hack. Cause like putting a plate on a leg presser hack a lot of times and doing like a set of 12 or whatever, it actually doesn't feel like the exercise itself. It's like insufficiently difficult to where the mind muscle connection and seemingly even the movement patterns just seem off. And it's like it's preparing me for a different exercise. So it's also like I have to fuck with plates less. It saves me time, energy, annoyance. I just do a set of bodyweight squats, set of 15. And then the next thing I do in leg press is like a little heavier than I would normally start for normal warm and it all seems to work out well. Ta-da. Oh, last potentiation set. This will be a good weight for me to start. 585. Not bad. All right, set one.
15 reps, 10, rest, three, rest, two. Sets the uh, minimum standard for the rest of the mezzo on set one. So from here, I do another by two or three sets. And next week, first set will be by 15 reps with 595, week after 605, etc. This is what uh, week one looks like. A lot of folks, a lot of you guys have been asking, you know, because a lot of our training videos, the high production ones, they're like peak week. So everything's very close to failure. And then a lot of folks have been asking, hold on, what does week one look like? Here you go. Notice I got all the reps, no problem. But okay. the term easy is not the most accurate term to describe what just happened, but very manageable. And I, I put it this way, RAR aside, which is the best way to catalog what you're doing. The concept with week one is to challenge yourself and give yourself some obvious room above. Like I can do more, not a ton of room, just a little bit. And then next week you do more, 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 until you can't do more. And then the mezzo is over. Oh, 13. It'll be 11 on the next. Common question is, does me dropping, it's like I'm like pressing hacks. I typically drop my reps by like two. Uh, does that accurately reflect a true RIR? So is 15, three RIR? Okay, let's say yes. Is 13 really three RIR again? And would 11 really be three RIR again? Is there a guarantee that the two rep drop works? No. On average, it does though. And RAR gauging in the set is so hard that I typically just do that two drop. Sometimes in the later sets, set three, four, five, I'll just drop by one because the initial fatigue is more substantial than later set fatigue. You guys might have noticed that, like, you set a 15, next set is 10, next set is eight. Then it's seven, seven, six, something like that. So for me, a lot of times, having learned my body and its responses over the years, I'll default to a set pattern and auto-regulate a little bit from there, rather than treating RIR estimates as like a wobbly-footed new, newborn deer every time, like trying to really guess raw on every set of week one the RIR. Yes, there's a place for that, especially as a beginner or intermediate more advanced, I kind of know roughly the zone. And then as I get to, let's say 12 reps, I think at rep 11, all right, is 12 really where I'm stopping? Should I stop now? Or should I go for 13, 14? And then it's just one quick split decision for me to make as opposed to approaching past 10 and thinking, is this three RIR? No, do a rep. 
is this three RIR? No, do a rep. It's a lot of cognitive overhead. And you would think, okay, Jesus is Rattel, like, how hard is it to think about RIR? It's not. But there's other shit you should be thinking about. Um, technique, <laughs> uh, my muscle connection, all that stuff. And I'd rather be thinking about that and have the RIR thing be a really relatively simple algorithm rather than, you know, put a lot of cognitive balance into that. And on that note, clear? Let's go throw up. Throwing up's not that bad. It's the right before slash between throw ups. You don't know if it's happening. You just want to feel better. based on what I blabbed about earlier, right as I got to like nine reps, I was like, yeah, 12 isn't gonna be a problem. 11 is gonna be too easy. Easy decision, I can focus on technique. Dr. Mike, you ask, what are you drinking during your workouts? Usually just water with like one of those calorie free squirts. This one's like strawberry cranberry or some shit. Shit I'll be throwing up anyway, you know? I uh, was at Walmart with my wife and I like this bottle. It's like a good size and grip and I like the cap and I need a bottle to drink from during workouts. So I got it and it came home and I poured the stupid alkaline, where the fuck is in here, directly into the drain, put tap water in it and we're good to go. Tap water, that's how dad did it, that's how grandpa did it. God, squatting with this bar for me is like playing beautiful music on a violin. Oh, tension set, last warm up here. By the way, you guys didn't miss anything. I only generally do like two sets to warm up for exercises that are not first for that muscle group. So my leg press is already warmed up the quads, hips, knees, etc. And then this just two, two warm ups that should be good enough. So I'll stay here, throw on the belt, do some pause squats. Um, two sets here, because it's five total quad sets with some eye reps, that's usually how I start. Again, erring on the side of a little less. Reps, I'm not sure, five to 10. These are gonna be solid pauses. Um, so work from that.
Ooh. Oh, holy shit. Pretty easy. Technique felt good. Everything's good. Eight reps, solid pauses. Next set will be like six. Call it a day. That's six. Fuck it. <laughs> well, a biddy a biddy. That's all, folks. That's the workout. Here's the deal. You want to see more long, drawn out bullshit like this? Sign up for the membership. Get lots of cool other perks get to see in-depth educational videos that are basically too nerdy to go on the regular channel and vlog style training like this, in-depth Q and A with myself and James, a few other things for mere pennies. Anyway, before you decide whether or not you're gonna click the button, look around where the Lambo's at. <laughs> this is no Lambo. Help me.